Hello everyone and welcome to my Autodesk Revit tutorial. In today's Autodesk Revit tutorial, I'll be showing you how to model a reinforced concrete column with the rebar inside it. So the rebar would include the main reinforcement bars and the stirrups. But before I begin this Revit tutorial, I'd like you to hit the like button and subscribe for more Autodesk Revit tutorials like this. And without further ado, let's get started. And now I've opened up a brand new Revit project file. So let's proceed to the structure tab and click on column over here. And for this tutorial, I will not be drawing in the column grid lines because I'm just drawing one column only. And if you want to learn how to draw in column grid lines, you should check out my tutorial on grid lines in Revit. So let's select a RC column over here. So I'm going to use the concrete rectangular column that is in the Revit project by default over here. And before we draw in anything, we should check if you're using depth for height. If you're using depth, we are drawing from level 2 downwards. So if I were to place one right here and open up in 3D, the column would be starting from level 1 to level 2. But if I were in level 1, and if I were to do the same thing over here, let's say it's unconnected, I will end up drawing it under level 1. So that's one thing to note. If you want to use height, you should start from level 1. If you want to use depth, you should start from level 2. So let's get into the rebar modeling over here. So before we begin any rebar modeling, we should first set the rebar cover over here by selecting cover in the structure tab and selecting this column and you can see this drop down over here so you can select the rebar cover from a variety of different rebar covers over here but for this case i'll just keep it at 25 millimeters over here and now we can exit the rebar cover tool just by clicking elsewhere and hitting escape twice so now that we've already defined the rebar cover for our column, let's draw in the rebar elements in this column over here. So proceed to the rebar button over here and left click it and you'll see this Revit pop-up window over here. You can click on OK. This is concerning the hooks and end treatments. We can actually deal with that later once the rebar are placed in the column or beam. So to draw in the vertical reinforcement bars for our column we need to use a near cover reference here and use a perpendicular to cover setting alternatively you can actually draw it in with the parallel to cover setting as well but you cannot use parallel to work plane so now i'll just quickly draw in using the perpendicular to cover setting over here so let's say i placed one vertical rebar here if i were to choose parallel to work plane by accident, I'd be drawing in the rebar the wrong way. I'd be drawing it horizontally instead of vertically. So that's not what I want over here. So back to level 2. Let me just delete this. So before we draw in more of these vertical bars over here, I would like to draw in the stirrups first. So I'm currently using the UK library. So it might be slightly different from what you see over here in the rebar shape browser. So you can actually draw the stirrups using shape 51 or shape 63. So I'll show you the differences between the two. So let's start with 51. And I'll place one over here. And I'll place uh, 63 maybe down here somewhere. Let me just let me just uh, quickly go into a side view and drag it down. So if you don't see any rebar over here, select this column, click on filter, check none, and select structural rebar and OK. Scroll down and find view visibility states under the graphics drop down. And you can actually view it as unobscured in the 3D view and as a solid in the 3D view. But in other views, you can only view it as unobscured. So right now I'm in the east elevation. So check on the view 
unobscured option here for the ease elevation and click on OK. So there are actually two stirrups in the same location here. So let me just move one down. Like so. So the difference between the rebar shape 51 and 63 mainly lies in the hooks. So over here for 51, I can change it to a seismic 135 degree hook over here, like so. But for the rebar 63, if I do the same, you will get something like this instead. So this is the key difference between rebar shape 51 over here and 63. If you use the 135 degree seismic hooks for 51, you'll get something like this over here, which is commonly seen. But for rebar shape 61, if you use the 135 degree hook over here at the ends, you'll get something like this. So this is not what I want, so I'll just delete this. And I can actually multiply the number of stirrups just by using the number with spacing option here. So the height of this column is 3 meters, so let me just key in 30 so that each of the stirrups are 10 centimeters apart over here. So now let's go back to the plan view over here. So let's select this, filter, check none, go to view visibility states, and in level 1, view as unobscured. Okay, so I'll just quickly change my stirrup to a 8mm diameter bar. Notice that when you select the stirrup, there's actually a button that can help you drag and adjust the placement of the rebar accordingly. So that's one thing to note that's useful. You can make fine adjustments if say Revit is not exactly placing it correctly. And usually for dimensioning it's best to keep it at a 1 to 20 scale so that you can see things in a more fine manner. So you can make fine adjustments and make sure your dimensions are correct. Another way to draw in the rebar is to select the reinforced concrete column here and click on the rebar button. And go back to the top and choose the 0, zero rebar shape. Choose perpendicular to cover, so I'll just quickly place down and you can just select these over here. And mirror them on the other side so that you don't have to bother with placements. So mirror, pick axis. So you can just pick the middle over here, like so. And that's how you can draw in the rebar quickly. So now let's dimension things. So go to the annotate tab, click on align. So let's check on the rebar cover settings. So let's select this face and this face here. So it's 27 millimeters. So it's very close to our rebar cover of 25. So we can actually adjust this to 25 millimeters here. Oh, looks like we can't change it that way. So we can just change it manually just by moving the rebar slightly, like so. So it's always handy to do the rebar detailing on a scale that's not 1 to 100, it's better to use 1 to 20 or any finer scale. So everything is correct over here in terms of rebar cover, so we can just delete these. And now that I've deleted most of the dimensions for the rebar cover, I can dimension the rest of the column. So I can dimension the spacing between individual bars over here. So, if you were to select the stirrup over here, you might see additional settings like dimensions. I'll be making a specific tutorial video on this topic over here. And I'll also be making tutorial videos on how to connect your 
beams to your columns by drawing in anchors. So stay tuned for that. And that's it for today's Autodesk Revit tutorial on reinforced concrete column modeling and dimensioning. If you found this tutorial useful, like this tutorial and share this tutorial and subscribe for more Autodesk Revit tutorials like this. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and goodbye.